Hello, everyone. My name is Yan Wen Wei. Today, I'm going to talk about multitask learning-based PS wave separation and reverse time migration for VSP. My co-authors of these works are Yunyue Edita Li, Jing Jing Zong, Ji Zong Yang from National University of Singapore, Jin Wei Fang from China University of Petroleum, and Hao Huan Fu from Tsinghua University. I will quickly go through the background of PS wave separation. I will give an overview of our machine learning based PS wave separation. And for the most significant part of our work, I will highlight the training dataset building strategy. And to examine the effectiveness of our method, we also designed several robustness tests. And I will also show how this test review the effect of our method. And finally, I will make a conclusion of this work. So why do we do PS wave separation? We know that P and S velocity take different seismic attributes of the subsurface. Separating P and S waves leads to a complete description of the underground rock properties. This helps us to know the reservoir better. For example, many studies have shown that the information takes from the separated S waves help to find gas cloud and rock fractures orientation. And PS wave separation is also an essential part of reverse time migration. Mig uh, migration using separate the P and S waves reduce the artifacts in the imaging. Current PS wave separation for VSP shot gatherers all have li their limitations. Physical based method require apparent P and S velocity difference, and the geological structure of subsurface has to be simple. These methods are hard to handle complicated situations. And in real data processing workflow, experts usually need to use many techniques and tools to settle down how to choose the parameters, which is very human intensive. On the other way, in statistical method, unsupervised methods such as SVD, SAA have their upper bound. They are usually difficult to improve the separation quality. This is because the link between physical parameters and the statistical parameters are not conspicuous, so that experts are not easy to turn them well. So we turn to supervise the statistic method. One of them is machine learning based method. Machine learning based method is a data driven method. We put the physical information into the training data sets. If the separator is trained well, this method can handle complicated subsurface situation. And the machine learning method is very automatic and can reduce human interaction. Naturally, this method can also utilize multi-component seismic data. So currently, machine learning based methods are worth trying. Next, we are showing our machine learning based method to do the PS wave separation for VSP short gathers. The overall workflow contains three parts, the data preparation, the training, and the testing. In the data preparation, we use synthetic modeling and the Helmholtz decomposition to get the training datasets. This theory reveals the most complete relationship between PS waves and the mixed four waveforms, and it is convenient to produce in numerical modeling. To simulate the multi-component separation, we make our uh, we make four short gathers, the two component VSP receivers, VZ and VX, and the separated PNS potential. We put them into our network to train, and after that, when we give uh, this two component VSP short gather, the network will give us the separated PNS potential. So how does our network be de designed? As you can see. This network is a multi-input and multi-output task. In this 2D case, we have two inputs and two outputs. Actually, there are many neural network structures can realize this multi-in and multi-out function. Most easy to think, you can use two networks. Each one is in charge of separating one mode. And the most straightforward, if you are already a network user, you can just put the 
to outputs in different channels. However, we found that when the difference between the two outputs are huge, only putting them in, on different channels is not good enough to, sep to separate them well. So we involve the multitask neuro neural network structure to fulfill this task. Instead of channel-level splitting, we use layer-level changes to the network. Comparing two separated PNS waves by two networks, a multitask structure reduces a huge amount of computation and memory cost. And comparing to channel-level modif modification, layer-level splitting can make high-quality separations. The detailed structure of neural network turns to be like this. It is comprised of two parts, the common feature extractor and the two-mode separator. The common feature extractor receives multi-components of seismic data from the input and extracts features from all com components. The two uh, single-mode separators recombine the features from the uh, common feature extractor and to constitute P and S potential, respectively. We may notice machine learning is a data-driven method. How the network performs highly depends on what kind of dataset we feed them. So how can we decide what kind of dataset should we put into the network when we're facing an exploration project? So here, we first set the exploration project. The finger plots the subsurface model in this project. You can see it has seven layers. Worth to mention that the sixth layer velocity is much higher than its upper and bottom layers. The color bar here presents the range of p-velocities. Velocity value has a very wide range, and we set s-velocities according to the PS wave ratio constant. The acquisition system follows walkaway VSP geometry. Borehole locates vertically in the middle with receivers in it, and the, and the sources are located beneath the surface. We simulate the VSP on this model as our target dataset. We have totally 140 shots in this target dataset. Our aim is to make our training network that's a good PS wave separation in this target dataset. Once we know the target, our training dataset building strategy contains two steps. First is to reduce the number of sources by sampling them, and then adding more receivers at each shot. With step one, reducing the sources, we dramatically lower the computational cost on our synthetic data pr producing. And the second step, without increasing the computation, we assume the moving receivers benefits us with involving more changes in the velocity models, which would increase the generalizability of the network. For description convenience, we name the data producing from the target acquisition system dataset A. And with only step one in our training dataset building strategy, we name it as dataset C. And uh, uh, dataset B are produced under our complete data training dataset building strategy. Then we train two individual networks using dataset B and dataset C, and then test the results on dataset A. The first two columns are the reference P and S waves we made by synthetic modeling with Hamhol's decomposition. Middle two columns are predicted P and S waves by neural network trained on dataset C. And the last two columns are the separated results using the network trained on our dataset building strategy, dataset B. From the results, we can see only with step 1, the separation results are not acceptable, but after the two steps of dataset building, the separation ability of trained network has significant improvements. We also use acoustic RTM to, uh, to examine the results. The first columns are images made by reference and waves. The middle three images are using waves um, predicted by NN trained on dataset C. And the last three images are using waves predicted by NN trained on dataset B. So first row are using um, P waves as back propagator. The results by N trend on dataset C 
lose lots of effective images and make some wrong images. While results uh, using our training dataset building strategy remain most of the useful images. The following two rows are images using reflected S-waves and transmitted S-waves. The comparison between results entered on dataset B and C is even prominent, which shows from the perspective of migration, our training dataset building strategy help neural network to do a good PS wave separation. To better understand what extreme separation ability our training dataset is, we make this robustness test. These changes can be classified as four groups. Group 1 make velocity changes into the subsurface model, so that the slope of waves would change. Group 2 add more reflections and transmit the interface into the subsurface model so that P and S phases are involving. Group 3 make structure variety in the subsurface model. An integrated change would be added into short gathers. Most of the datasets in this group have a huge difference from the training datasets. At last, group 4 are adding uh, Gaussian noise directly into the seismic data to examine the anti-noise ability of our network. We have R-square score of P and S separation results. R-square score describes the relative difference between the testing results with the referenced results. The range of the score is no more than 1. The nearest to 1 means the results are more like the reference results, which means the results are better. We highlight the high score results. The results are constant to our expectation. That it shows generally the less the changes we made from the target data sets, the higher the score they get. So here, we only pick one case to show what our neural network ability is. This is a structure variety test. Structure variety means there are geological structures in the subsurface model which the neural network has never seen in the training dataset. This model is part of the same model with a big salt on the right of the subsurface model. We derive p velocity with the same model and the keep s velocity also have the same ps ratio as with the training dataset. Sources and receivers are set the same as our formal models. The scatter plotting on the right gives an overview of the separation performance of the results. The higher, the better. To know what is going on here in the data, we pick up two typical shots. One is relative low score results, one is relative higher scores. The six fingers in one row are from one shot. They are VZ, VX, reference the p-waves, predict the p-waves by using our method, reference the s-waves, and predict the s-waves by using our method. From the figure, we can see the common good separations are the p-first arrivals and some of the s-transmitted waves. And the common weakness of our method is that uh, the weak events are hard to sense by the, by the networks. In the bottom row, you can see strong reflections from salt. This is a near salt shot. The first strong seismic event at around 2.4 seconds, which are P waves reflected from the salt. You can see P separator successfully separated it. However, after another one second, there's a group of strong S waves reflected from the salt. The S separator succeeded separating them but the p-separator wrongly includes them as p-waves. So we check it through the reverse time migration. The background velocity in this case are not include soft bodies. And fortunately, by using our machine learning based separation, we can still image the soft body boundary, but with a slightly resolution reduction. Finally, Let's make a conclusion of our machine learning based method on VSP synthetic data. The good news is that the robustness test show our trend network has a wide ability to do the PS wave separation on different velocity models and change in the dataset. The results are good enough for reverse time migration, 
But if the data are used for signal level analysis, the generalization range should be shrinked and may need some post processing. Limitations of our current training method include that the separator does not do well on weak seismic events. And when facing noises, it may transfer one kind of noise to another. We are still working on solving these problems, and we have confidence with the development of machine learning. More robustness machine learning based PS wave separator will make contribution to geophysical explorations. That's all my presentation. Thanks for listening, and I'm looking forward to your questions and suggestions.